All right, quick update on the tote goat project. Where we left off, the tote goat was still being scraped. The fork had been primed and the pegs had been primed, but there had been no painting yet. The uh, engine over here, the engine had been disassembled, cleaned, repainted, and reassembled. And so that was done, it's still done. So what I've done over the, uh, over the winter and what I've started doing in the spring is finishing the painting and I'm still working on that. I was able to cut bigger slots right here because the uh, smaller engine was not fitting in the old mounts. So now I've got these big slots that allow us, me to move the engine and get the belt at the right tension, which was a problem before. Um, I've painted all the other components too as well. This is like the, this is the torque converter, this is the gas tank, this is the back seat. For all the black paint um, and not the orange body, I pulled out this really cool paint I have uh, that I got for a project several years ago, Pour 15. It's, it goes directly over rust. So whereas I took the time to really make sure I cleaned the body, um, I didn't really want to take the time to clean the gears and, you know, the wheels as much. Um, but I did take the time to, de to degrease them. So the Pour 15 is really good, but it's not UV resistant. So I've got this normal black Rust-Oleum to paint on top of that, which I still have got to do. Um, I've also got the, um, the trailer hitch I made. I wanted to paint this um, because it was getting really rusty. So I've started doing that and it's almost done. This has got two coats of paint on it. If you look, there's still a lot of the base color showing through. This was really rusty, so I used the Pour 15 on this as well. That Pour 15 is really crazy stuff and it works really good. Um, but yeah, this, this orange paint, um, it's a really, really vivid orange, but it's actually pretty translucent for a paint. So it takes, you know, about three or four coats to get really good coverage. So if we look at how good the coverage is on this, this is probably about six coats and there's more going on um, because I want this to have lots of protection on it. Um, one thing I'm considering for the body is plastic um, rails or protection. I've got um, some blocks of UHMW that I can cut up and bolt so that when I go over rocks, it's, it's, it's scraping across plastic instead of on the metal, which is something I'm considering. I'm also considering putting grip tape down here where your feet go, which I think would be a nice addition. It'll look really good. Um, for the foot pegs, which are over here, um, I was thinking about, um, originally they'd have like a sleeve that would go over them that's made of rubber, and that's what they would protect the pegs from wearing from your feet. But I've got this belt here, and I was just thinking I'd drill holes and cut a piece of the belt and just screw it onto the peg like that. And that would look really good and, and work really well. So that's the plan for that. But I've got to get more layers of paint on the pegs before I go and do that. <sighs> what else have we got? Okay, the other thing I've done so far is I've... Uh, this is the old suspension spring, right? Um, I probably I showed this in the other video. Um, the suspension springs were busted. Well, this one was, but the other one, even though it's still intact, it's still 50 years old. So it's not a very good spring to be using. It it just wasn't working. So I got a quote made for what a custom spring would cost, and it's just not feasible because of the minimum order pricing. So it would end up being about a hundred dollars per spring. So it'd be two hundred dollars for the suspension. That's quite a lot um, for such an old bike and just such a laid-back project. So I did a lot of research, I, I learned a lot about springs, and I found a spring that should work. And I, it was on Amazon, which is great. And uh, that's on its way. I've also ordered assistive air springs for my RAV4. So when I mount up the tote goat on the trailer hitch, that um, it doesn't weigh down the rear suspension so much. Once I got the tote goat on there and a bunch of passengers and luggage and stuff, it, it just bottoms out way too easily. And my clearance isn't good to get where I need to go. So that'll be a great addition. I was surprised at how little that's gonna cost me. Hopefully I will be able to install it myself without any trouble. 
Last thing. Um, the tote goat would originally have had expanded metal sides to protect you from getting your hands all in the gears and losing your hands and your fingers. Um, um, originally, I really, really wanted to have expanded metal siding. And I just couldn't get it at the price I wanted. And it was like, I, um, it has to be removable because otherwise you can't get the engine or maintain the, uh, the belts and the chains and all that stuff. And so I was just having a hard time figuring out how I wanted to do that. Expanded metal looks is expensive, and then how do you shape it? How do you how do you make it so it doesn't have jagged edges and, and, and is nice and, and rounded? So I woke up one night and I was like, mesh, fabric mesh. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, buttons that are gonna be screwed to the body, and you just pop on, pluck, pluck, pluck. And it'll be stretched fabric, black fabric, um, on both sides. And that should work really good. Actually, this side, this part's open. So it's just gonna be this back here, and then it's on this other side, it goes the full, the full length. Anyway, that'll be a lot easier to make. It'll look good, it'll be easy to take off, it'll be cheap. Uh, there's nothing bad about it, except for the fact that it's not authentic to the original, but, um, I mean, I would, I would just go without it, except for the fact that I would like to have it, uh, you know, so that you can't get your fingers in there and, 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 you know, come out without fingers. So, there we go. That's the update so far with the tote goat. Um, it's making good progress. Um, this is going to be back together before the neck, before the last weekend of next month, because I'm taking it to the sand dunes. There you go, it's coming along and it's awesome. So stay tuned.